Hello. Today we're going to start talking about the immune system. So take a look at that. Isn't it beautiful? That is actually the microbes that are on the hand of an eight-year-old child after he was playing outside. So like played outside for an hour and then his mom had him come inside and put his handprint onto that petri dish. And then that's the bacteria that grew from it. Like I know that we know there's always bacteria on us, but it's kind of crazy when we stop and think about it. What's keeping those microbes from entering the little boy's body? And like, how does it happen? Like, is there a different way to keep every single microbe out? Or is there just kind of like general barriers that keep things out? These are all the sorts of questions that we are gonna answer this unit with the immune system. And you might already be familiar with this, but we're gonna talk about the immune system in two different parts, the innate and the adaptive. The innate is considered non-specific because it's there to keep everything out. Kind of like um, a moat around a castle or like the walls of the castle itself. They're a barrier that's there, it's always in place. They're trying to keep out water, people, fire, stones, everything. The adaptive arm is specific and that would be, if we're going to go on with the soldier analogy, or with the castle analogy, that would be like soldiers. Like maybe a crossbowman shooting a specific invader, something like that. So today's discussion is going to focus on the innate or the non-specific arm. I also want to mention that the immune system is considered a functional system rather than an organ system in an anatomical sense. Like the muscle system is all the muscles bones, the skeletal system is all the bones, but the immune system is just like all of these spread out molecules and immune cells that live throughout the body, so they share a common function rather than a common structure, hence functional system. Okay, so we are starting with the innate system, and we are going to talk about the first line of defense, which is our surface barriers. So kind of like the human version of the moat around the castle. So innate surface barriers. So there's the skin. Um, the intact epidermis is able to form a strong mechanical barrier. And then remember that the epidermis also secretes stuff. It secretes sweat and sebum. Those secretions make the surface of the skin acidic, which inhibits bacterial growth. So that acidity is referred to as the acid mantle. Skin also has the protein keratin inside of it. Keratin helps form tight junctions between cells, which keep the bacteria out because they're just literally so close together, the bacteria can't squeeze between them. And it also provides some resistance against acids and enzymes that could be potentially damaging. So your skin is pretty great. And then what happens if something is able to slip through where we don't have skin, like the holes in your nose or the holes in your mouth? All of those places are lined with this tissue type. Remember the ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells that secrete mucus? This is our, this is our main defense if something gets past the skin. All of our mucosa. Um, let's talk about them in a little bit more detail and specifically like what they're keeping out. So the function of the mucus everywhere is to trap the microbes, mainly in your respiratory pathways and your digestive tract, because the mucus is sticky. They'll literally stay right there. And then we have um, nasal hairs that are also able to help um, filter. So like a dust particle that's trying to enter the body might get caught on top of a nasal hair. And we have cilia so that the stuff doesn't stay in your nose or stay in your digestive tract. The cilia move and they help propel the trapped pathogen to where it can be destroyed. Your stomach has gastric juice, hydrochloric acid. That's an enzyme that's strong enough to break down a protein. And more importantly, pretty much any other pathogen that enters the stomach is going to get broken down in the hydrochloric acid. Like the skin, the acid mantle has its own, the vagina has its own acid mantle that helps prevent bacteria or fungus from growing where we don't want it to grow. 
lacrimal secretions. Do you remember the lacrimal bone? It was kind of like in the corner of our eye socket. So lacrimal secretions are also known as tears and they are similar to saliva. So tears and saliva both help to lubricate and cleanse and they also contain lysozyme. Lysozymes are enzymes that can destroy invading microbes. And your urine. Um, it's acidic, which again is preventing bacterial growth. And then when we pee, it really helps kind of cleanse everything, anything that we don't want in there, out. So we have our skin and we have our intact mucous membranes as our first line of defense.